question is that the words proposed to be omitted stand part of the question, and I call the member for Morton. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker, and I'm happy to follow on from the member for Macon to speak on the Social Security Administration Amendment continuation of Cassius Welfare Bill 2019. He always makes a fine, considered uh, contribution, and I, I've been uh, speaking after him for now in my 14th year, and happy to do so. Happy to do so. Uh, because Labor opposes the extension of the existing cashless debit car trial sites unless there is clear evidence of local community support. Mm -hmm. And that is crucial, uh, Deputy Speaker. What this bill will do is make the cashless debit card trial sites of Sejuna in South Australia, uh, uh, an area that I've visited for this, the East Kimberley, the Goldfield, which is the Kalgoorlie, Kilgardie and surrounding areas, and Bundaberg Harvey Bay in Queensland. What it does is make those trial sites permanent, irrespective of the views of locals. It will permanently replace the basics card with the cashless debit card in the Northern Territory, and it will replace the basics card with the cashless debit card uh, in Queensland's Cape York and extend income management in Cape York until the end of next year. This legislation will also make it easier for a person to volunteer to be placed on a cashless debit card and allow a person to remain on a cashless debit card when they move outside one of the prescribed areas. It will enable the Secretary to review and revoke cashless debit card exit provisions if the Secretary no longer believes a person who exited the card is reasonably and responsibly managing their own affairs. The cashless debit card trial sites in Sejuna, the East Kimberley, the Goldfield and Bundaberg Harvey Bay were just that. Deputy Speaker, they were trial sites. The reason we governments have trials or pilots uh, for some policy initiatives is to review how they work and see whether they are worth refining and whether they are worth rolling out further or if they should indeed be pulled back because they are not working. Remember, the residents in these areas were actually conscripted guinea pigs when it comes to this government policy. But with these trials, the Morrison government was not actually interested in finding out whether they were actually successful. It took long-standing criticisms about the lack of evidence available on the trials before the Morrison government eventually committed to an independent review. But before even receiving the review, the Morrison government announced that the trials would be made permanent. The review conducted by the University of South Australia actually concluded that, and I quote, we have shown the CDC to have had no substantive effect on the available measures for the targeted behaviours of gambling or intoxicant abuse. Mm -hmm. I stress that again, no substantive effect. The Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Psychiatrists said in their submission to the Senate inquiry, we are concerned at the continued pursuit of this policy against the advice of addiction specialists. More than 50 years of psychological research shows that positive reinforcement strategies are more effective than punitive strategies in bringing about behavioural change. It's, it's almost like society has moved on a little bit since they wrote the Old Testament a couple of uh, thousand years ago. There's a clear pattern with this Morrison government, and we've seen it time and time again. Almost every policy that Prime Minister Morrison tries to ram through this parliament, because I think fundamentally he'd rather just run things without that nasty inconvenience of democracy, every, nearly every policy they've ran, tried to ram through is against the recognised expert advice. Prime Minister Morrison proudly gets out his stamp and puts, stamps it on every, every bill. Ignored my experts. That's what he stamps yep. on, on the document. Just this week, we've seen the family court merger bills being rammed through the House, a bill that will abolish the specialist standalone family court of Australia. Liberal and National Party members were the only ones who voted for it. Not Labor, no. not the Greens, no. not one crossbencher who managed to unite Bob Catter, uh, uh, yep. uh, the, the member for Mayo, all on a, a unity ticket. Not one crossbencher voted for it. And you know why? Because all of the expert evidence says it is a really bad idea. Yep. Hundreds of stakeholder groups. Still, the Prime Minister got out his stamp and said, ignored my experts. Ignored, proud of it. Today, the House has debated a bill that effectively returns unemployment payments to the old New Start rate yep. after the 31st of March next year. 
Who thinks that's a good idea? Well, not the Australian Council of Social Service, no. not the Council of the Ageing Australia, not no. the Australian Human Rights Commission, no. nor a range of other community sector organisations, peak bodies and groups representing social security payment recipients, uh, economists, who all made submissions to the Senate Committee inquiry raising concerns. Even the Australian Retailers Association, not exactly a cabal of lefties, no. uh, I would suggest, even the Australian Retailers Association has said that a three-month extension of the coronavirus supplement is a band-aid on a social and economic wound that we need to address as a nation. Again, the Morrison government has not listened to the experts but has pig-headedly followed its own ideology to the detriment of all Australians. Prime Minister Morrison again pulled out his stamp that he sits up there next to his world's cruelest immigration minister trophy That's and, right. bam, again, put the stamp, ignored my experts. And this bill in front of the chamber is no different. Mm -hmm. Again, the Morrison government is actually ignoring its own independent analysis. In fact, it didn't even bother reading the report before committing to making permanent the current trial sites. Even worse than not listening to the experts is not listening to the First Nations communities who will be most impacted, who will be impacted hardest by this legislation. The Aboriginal peak organisations in the Northern Territory told the Senate inquiry into the bill, uh, quote, our perspective on the cashless debit card from the enormous consultation we've had with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities is that they don't want it, hence why we're calling on the Senate not to support this bill. First Nations communities, the people that have the oldest words on earth, should have words that are listened to by this parliament. They should be listened to. Nothing about us without us. That's a pretty good rule of thumb when it comes to First Nations people. This legislation will disproportionately impact First Nations people. 68 per cent of the people who will be forced onto the cashless debit card are First Nations Australians. That's 23,000 out of the 34,000 people impacted by this card will be Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people and 18,000 people in the Northern Territory. We suspect what the Morrison government's real agenda was, but this bill has finally exposed that this government's real agenda is a big permanent rollout of the card. With all of the problems associated with it that have been detailed by previous speakers, one that I would particularly uh, touch on that the member for Macon uh, called out, I think he belled the cut. If you remove people's ability to have pride when they go about living their life, you crush their soul. Mm. And that is a for, for a government that professes to care about mental health, that is a dangerous road to go down. Labor is opposed to income management programs that may catch and disempower the wrong people, such as this type of broad-based compulsory income management program. But some income management programs can be justified programs that are targeted. In Cape York, the local community is applying income management based on individual circumstances and it supports the families and it monitors the outcomes. That type of income management is appropriate where community support continues. As that rule that I said, nothing about us without us. This rule is being applied in the Cape York uh, area. The Cape York welfare reform commenced more than 12 years ago. It arose from a partnership with four Cape York communities, the Queensland Government, the Commonwealth Government and the Cape York Institute. The Cape York welfare reform was grounded <clears throat> by the establishment of the Families Responsibilities Commission, the FRC, which was legislated by Premier Anna Bly back in 2008. The FRC is an, exa an example of Indigenous empowerment. Its structure was designed by Cape York people for Cape York families. It shifts power and responsibility from government, distant government. Remember, uh, Brisbane is as close to Cape York as Brisbane is to Melbourne. It shifts power and responsibility from government to the community itself to respected local elders and leaders acting as local family responsibility commissioners. The FRC commissioners have the power to call people in and conference with them if they've failed to send their children to school, or if they've been the subject of a child safety notice, or if they've committed an offence or failed to pay their rent. Income management orders are part of a number of measures available under the conditional welfare approach in the Cape York model but only after restorative justice conferencing from local FRC commissioners. Clients are also linked to extra support services to motivate and build capacity for change. Nothing about us without us. 
Under the Cape York model, income management is not a blanket restriction imposed on all, and it is not permanent. That's right. It has the hope of rehabilitation and change. The order can be removed by the local FRC commissioners where a person has shown that they have taken steps to change and to fulfil their obligations. The ability to have pride, a job, etc., all of those things that, are, that humans are built for. There is overwhelming community support for the Cape York welfare reform. Nothing about us without us. Cape York communities do not want distant governments deciding their futures for them. And when I say distant governments, I mean Brisbane, not Canberra. The Aboriginal Peak Organisations Northern Territory, in their submission to the Senate inquiry, said that the bill was expensive, paternalistic, not based on the evidence, and it is a top-down blanket approach that will not address the real needs or complex systemic issues impacting Aboriginal people living in the Northern Territory. They went on to say that compulsory and conditional income management is a vehicle for disempowerment and continuing the stigmatisation and trauma of Aboriginal people. St Vincent de Paul Society, in its submission to the committee, talked about its concern of unintended consequences and circumvention behaviours that may arise where people with serious addiction are left without adequate support. They said cutting off access to cash may cause addicts, addicts to seek out other means to access alcohol and drugs, often bring, bringing detrimental consequences to those around them. The Council of Single Mothers and their children told the Senate committee that the distress, shame and hardship the cashless debit card causes to people, and disproportionately women, mothers and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, is based on a false assumption that stripping people of autonomy and dignity will solve, solve serious health and social issues. We know that this bill is just the beginning of a brutal government's plan to roll out the cashless debit card. We know some in the Morrison government have been calling for a national rollout. We know the Morrison government has established a technology working group with the big banks, the supermarkets and Australia Post and a few other uh, people connected uh, with the government to look at how this can be rolled out through the payment system. All of the actions of this government point towards a national rollout. That would allow Prime Minister Morrison to track and control what people on Social Security do with their money, money that they as Australian citizens are entitled to. Pensioners are already scared that they could be compulsorily put on a cashless debit card. And what will the government do then? Will they roll the program out to those receiving franking credits? Exactly. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Obviously, Labor does not support this bill. There is absolutely zero evidence that the trials have been successful. This bill is punitive. This bill racially discriminates. It will detrimentally affect the most disenfranchised people in Australia. It is a backward policy that harks of the Howard government's so-called intervention in the Northern Territory that was a white fella failure, irrespective of whatever uh, motivated it. This bill won't create a single job. It won't improve anyone's living conditions and it won't close the gap. Labor does not support this bill, and, but Labor does support the amendment and I support the amendment moved by the shadow minister. Hear, hear.